says, whatever I do, the miraculous works I do, it's not me that's doing it, but it's God working in me. When God works in me, a wondrous work, I make sure I give him the credit. Yeah, yeah. That's why I got a problem with sad looking Christians. <laughs> if you say it all the time, that means you aren't doing anything. Say, say. If you're not doing anything, that means God is not using you. Uh, <coughs> if God is using you to do great things, that means you're going to be bragging on the Lord. I don't have time to throw a pity party. I'm too, I'm too busy saying amen. I'm too busy. Praising God. I'm too busy yeah. saying thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Now that I see this sign signature, mm -hmm. I see this spirit of self sacrifice. Yeah. This spirit of self sacrifice. Paul says something else, he rings all the way through it. But I think we who are saints ought to really remind ourselves of it often. You can't really. Make meaningful contributions to the kingdom without having a selfless spirit. Mm -hmm. You can't function for God and be concerned about yourself huh. all the time. Yeah, yeah. You can't perform the works of God when they are predicated on being appreciated yeah. from the people. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, if, if the only time I'm going to preach come on now. is when I can get an amen, yeah. I don't need to preach. Y'all don't get it. Yeah. The only time I can serve is when somebody's going to shout, somebody's going to give me credit. <laughs> then they don't send you to try to serve that. It doesn't work that way in the real world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care what folks have taught you. When you were around God's folks, <laughs> you can do a whole lot and go back like you have another night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's my mind, y'all. Singing, they singing their hearts out. You look out there, and yeah, y'all heard folks standing up without the head, but you got some folks sitting there looking like they all lump on them up. <laughs> yeah, that's what do. You got the mic in your hand, you trying to sing for the Lord, and you trying to inspire folks, and you sitting there looking like. <laughs> Joker going to sleep on your time, you know. It's like somebody running a hundred yard dash, and you running out of wind, and the Joker sitting over there going to sleep like nothing's going on. <laughs> See, you learn, you learn that, that my, my, my dedication to what I'm doing. It's not predicated on the face in our seat. Paul told Timothy, don't allow their faces to intimidate you. Don't, don't allow them looking at you to cause you to want to give up. That, that your motivation don't come from their face. Yeah, 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 your yeah. motivation has to come from a higher source. I don't function in the kingdom because I'm looking for you to pay me. I don't function for the kingdom because I think you're going to give me a love offering. I don't function from the kingdom because I got an anniversary coming. I don't function from the kingdom or in the kingdom because I know you're going to pat me on the back. He says, my reward comes from the love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I have a witness here? So I got to learn how to function whether I get it return or not. Yeah. Paul said we function like parents. Huh. Parents don't expect their children to save up money huh. to retire them. Right. Wish I had a witness here. Good parents try to save up their money to help their children. Huh. Good see back in the day they didn't have social security and all that stuff. They used to have to have a big family to have somebody to take care of when they get old. That's why a lot of you black folks in trouble. Y'all go and they say, nursing home, we have a heart attack. I tell you, sometimes that's the best place to be. You know? Yeah. yeah. And these old weak ladies trying to turn you, your big fat self over all the time. That's <laughs> why some of y'all back trouble and all that because you scared to go to a nursing home. But that might be the best place for you. But that's another sermon. I don't know if this sister going to talk about that. But the fact is, is that, is that I got to understand 
that I want to take care of my children. I want to do for my children, not because I'm expecting them to do something in return for me. But I want to do something for my children because that's the parental instinct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Parents want to provide for my good parents. Right, right. I'm talking about trifle folks. Good parents want to provide for their children. Yeah. And what they do is not predicated on whether the child returns the love. Mm -hmm. I love you not because you love me. I love you before you even knew who you were. Yeah. Wish I had a witness here. I loved you while you were still in the womb. Yeah. I loved you when you were still a fetus. I loved you before you could talk. I loved you before you could walk. I loved you when you weren't doing anything but sticking up my house. I loved you when you were doing anything but, but breaking up all my stuff. I loved you before you could even function on a high level. My love for you is not predicated on you loving me back. That's part of my instinct. Well, that's the way a saint has to look at life. Yeah, you yeah. understand that when you function in the kingdom of God, you're not functioning. You don't love folk because they're lovable. You don't love folk because they love you in return. You love folk because that's part of your nature. That's why I said yeah, we yeah, have to yeah. love everybody. Yeah, yeah. No matter who you are, no matter what your background is, what Paul said, you Corinthians haven't really given me a whole lot of reason to love you, but you need to understand I love the devil out of you. I love you all the time. I love you anytime. I, I, I love you with a love that's beyond what you can even imagine. I love you. I'm never trying to take advantage of you because love doesn't take advantage of the other person. Love is about giving, 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 not growing up expecting anything in return. Do I have a witness here? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's some powerful stuff right there. Yeah, yeah. Paul says, I love you, I love you. Y'all, y'all remember that old story that uh, Shirley Caesar told us about the mother. Hmm. Yeah, it's a table, you know, it had the little note. Your boy says, I took out the guy from here, one dollar. I washed the dishes, one dollar. Come on, come on. Yeah, I made up my bed, one dollar. Went down this little missing at the bottom. He says, total five dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He says, Mama took the same note, flipped it on the other side. Yeah. 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 Carried you in my womb for nine months. Yeah. Born in the pain to make some money do. Yeah, yeah. No child. <laughs> Cooking and cleaning for you all the time. No charge. No charge. No charge. Cooking all your meals and making sure you're providing for them with good health. No charge. No charge. And then she put down on this. No charge. No charge. That you call love. Yeah, yeah. Motherly love. I wish I had a witness here. Yeah. That's, that's what it's all about. It's not, it's not about recognizing what you do. It's about knowing that you will get your reward. Yeah, yeah. Even though you don't get it from the proper source. I'm closing now. I'll be through. I see a supervised servant that's marching a mighty ministry of people who have God's signature on signs and wonders. Because they recognize that anything performed out of the ordinary is the Holy Spirit is doing. Yeah, amen. They have a self sacrificing spirit. All right. Because they recognize that we need to love folk the way God loves us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, it's all about what end you're looking at. If you're doing it respect or expecting something in return, look at the wrong end. Yeah, yeah. You look at it up here. He gave his love first. Yeah. I wish I had. See, we love him, the Bible says, because he first. Come on here, somebody. Anybody who's been capable of loving is folk who don't recognize the love of God. Yeah, yeah. Rev, you don't know what they've done to me. Well, I tell you all the time, whatever you've been done to, you've done worse to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't speak to you, you don't speak to God a whole lot of days. Huh. They mistreat you, you mistreat God a whole lot of days. Huh. You ignore God. Sometimes y'all even want to come to the Lord's house and say, thank you, Lord. You don't want to worship you. How do you mistreat God? Go through a whole day. You won't say, thank you, Lord, one time. 
but you want everybody to smile and grin every time they see you. Yeah. Do I have a witness here? Well, my brothers and sisters, finally I see this servants recognize they are supervised by a superpower. Paul said that, uh, that he has a sense of accountability, but his accountability is not to the saints at Corinth. His accountability is not to a man. His accountability is not to other folk, but his accountability is to God. Yeah. I wish I had a witness here. God and Jesus understand a sense of accountability. You recognize that uh, you're not answerable to man. But you are answerable to God. Amen. Wish I had a witness here. I, yeah. I, I've, been in, I've been in the world a long time. I've been around church for all the stuff. I've I heard stories about deacons camping out in women's house trying to catch a preacher coming to the wrong house. <laughs> all the time. I've seen all kinds of junk in hotels and all kinds of stuff. I've heard all kinds of stories. But you know what? I, I've never been intimidated about folk finding me. <laughs> The first thing you can do to make sure they don't catch you is don't do anything that's catchable. <laughs> right. Well, I, I'll tell you that sometimes you can even be misunderstood. But I'm not intimidated by folk. You see, the devil can make you think you're so smart you can trick your way around life and folk won't catch you. And I think I'll tell you, ain't nothing you do in the dark won't be exposed in the light. But I, 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 am, I am intimidated by God. Yeah. Because there's no way I go, God is not there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's nothing I do that God is not looking at me. Yeah, yeah. There's no thought I think that God is not listening to me. That God knows me better than I know myself. And the thing that, that really gives me to, to, to dedication, the thing that makes me really want to be about seriously and seriously functioning for the Lord is that I am accountable to the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Do I have a witness here? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I've got to stand before God's judgment bar. Well, that don't seem exciting to y'all. Well, that's exciting to me because you see, a lot of folks uh, don't recognize that when you know that you are accountable to God, it causes you to function on another level. Yeah, yeah. That's why I close up on Saturday nights when I got to preach and want to spend some time not studying. My sermon is already ready. I spend time on the meditate, wanting to spend time with God. You can't preach a sermon like this without the power of God working through you. Yeah. Which yeah. you can't expect the Holy Ghost to do anything through you if you haven't totally surrendered yourself to Him. Yeah, yeah. Do I have a witness here? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I've got to recognize God is the one that I answer to. Right? Oh, Pastor, you know, when we gonna do this, and we gonna, I ain't worried about y'all doing a whole lot of stuff. You can vote on my past, I told you before, but you can't vote on my ministry. My ministry is in the hands of the law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when one don't close, it's up to God to open up another door. Yeah. But I am accountable to God to what I say and what I do. Some folks don't want you to preach certain things. I was going around and had one church had nerve enough to tell me, we want to look at your sermon on Thursday so we'll know when now we can let you preach it on Sunday. Uh, just take my name off the list already. You see, I don't even need to be in that kind of situation. I, I don't preach stuff that's, a, that's approved by the deacons. I don't preach service that's approved by the trustee. No, no. My sermon has to be approved by the law. But the law might want me to preach something that step all on your toes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The law might want me to talk about your very fault, flaw, and failure. You want me to scratch it out, but the law won't allow me to scratch it out. That's the very thing he wants me to highlight. Lord might want me to talk about homosexuals, and you got to tell them that's a homosexual. And you don't want me talking about that that day. And the Lord said, Yeah, hey, you got to lift that up. You see, you see, I can't do what's always popular, but I've got to do what's right with the law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'd rather have God happy with me and all y'all mouths took out than have everybody praising my name and God got his mouth up. I wish I had some yeah, God can make a difference, so I learned, I better learn how to please the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Do I have a witness here? Paul said, well, y'all need to recognize I'm accountable to the Lord. Yeah. 
But then your mama say, I'm soft. He said, Jesus looked soft on the cross. But uh, he died and was buried, but the very Sunday morning, yeah, yeah, yeah. he wasn't soft anymore. Yeah. He woke up with all power in his hand. Yeah. Paul said, I'm scared when I come to you, I'm going to catch you all messed up. Yeah. I'm going to catch you quarreling and fussing with one another. I'm going catch you doing things you have no business doing. Sneaking around with homosexuality, sneaking around with all kinds of sexuality, fornication and adultery with other folks' wives and husbands. I'm afraid I'm gonna catch you doing things that are not becoming to God. He said, and y'all said I'm soft. He said, I'll show you something. When I see it, I'm gonna tell you about it. I wish I had a witness here. If I find out, you're gonna have to deal with me. Oh, you got to be quiet right now. I'm about to shout and I messed up about that. But let me tell you something. What I like, Paul said now, you got to have two or three witnesses to make it happen. In other words, Paul said, when you're talking about other people's faults and flaws, there's a procedure you got to follow. You don't be trying to have folks' faults all out in the open in the public. The Bible said you need to go to that person one-on-one. Got real quiet right there, <laughs> Tell them their faults one to another. Yeah. If you do it right, you want a sister or a brother. Yeah. They don't hear it, then you bring them two or three. And so out of my own two or three witnesses, the truth can be established. Yeah, yeah. Y'all know the procedure. That don't work then, he said, you can bring them before the church. But you gotta find all of that when you gossip and complain and talk about people and, and, and assassinate that character and don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. Gossip can be a dangerous thing. Gossip can mess up folk in a whole lot of ways. But then Paul said some, some, something you need to look at real closely is that again, you can't. Uh, Yes, change people. You can't attract folk to the Lord.